Hey, what's up everybody? It's Stacey Storino. Welcome back to my channel, the number one place for entrepreneur moms with a digital presence. Now, if you've been creating content for TikTok and you don't think it's getting you the three macro conversions you need, meaning more followers, more email opt-ins, and more sales, and now you're frustrated and think that TikTok's a waste of your time, please allow me to share with you my entrepreneur mom TikTok hashtag strategy because it might just help you get all three of those macro conversions thanks to your TikTok content marketing efforts, mama. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get real world help that entrepreneur moms like you need to succeed when you're doing business online today. Now, if you've been wondering about how to get 100K followers on TikTok, we've done it through my family business, Joe's Dairy Bar and Grill. So I share with you in the video entitled How to Get 100K Followers on TikTok, some of the tips that's helped us and hopefully those tips can help you too. So be sure to check that video out if you haven't already. But here in this video, I'm gonna teach you my entrepreneur mom TikTok hashtag strategy, and I'll do you one better. Better. I'll explain why that entrepreneur mom TikTok hashtag strategy actually works to fetch you the three macro conversions that you need in order to succeed. Hashtags matter. TikTok uses hashtags in order to index or organize and store content for retrieval on its application. So that hexadecimal system symbol is probably more important than you might have first thought, mama. It's not just something those crazy kids use as part of their caption. A caption is important in terms of your TikTok video. And that's something I'll cover in another video in this series. But you likely need to start viewing your caption and your hashtags as two separate components of not just publishing, but optimizing your content for discoverability via organic search on the TikTok platform. Hashtags are digital breadcrumbs. Think of hashtags a different way too. They're like digital breadcrumbs that help members of your niche Find your content and your business where they discover a piece of content in organic search and it leads them to your account. But keep in mind that you have to have a public account in order to do that. Lucky you, when you first create your TikTok account, by default, you have a public account. If you change that setting, however, now would be a good time for you to go and change it back. <laughs> And since it's free to do so, you should also make sure that your account is upgraded to a TikTok Pro account so that you can have access to analytics that will help you to understand your audience and create content that's more to their liking. But that, Mama, is a whole other video for a whole other day, okay? Community counts you should know that using hashtags as digital breadcrumbs not only helps people find you organically and actively in search, but it also helps the TikTok algorithm to determine what kind of audience your content should be served out to that aren't searching on, say, content optimized via a given hashtag right this second, but couldn't often do search for content like that, and voila, TikTok's algorithmic matchmaking helps you to find even more followers Followers even faster than you otherwise would have without the assistance. And it's human nature, assisted by a machine learning algorithm, that the more you post content using those types of hashtags that your ideal customer or members of your niche would use when searching for content in connection with the type of interests that they have relating to the solutions you offer for sale as an entrepreneur mom to solve problems and or satisfy desires, well, the more you post content optimized with the same or at least similar or related hashtags that your people use to search on in connection with that interest, the more of an overall community that you'll create on TikTok. This is how you create a community on TikTok right now, by using hashtags. Hashtags that are related to an interest that people have in common. Hence, there's a community out there for you who will enjoy you and your content once they start finding you, that is. The more of a custom-crafted communal feel you create, the more followers you score, fans or friends you know. And the more over time views you'll rack up, 
and the more likes and comments your content will collectively get and the more likely it is that people will click on the link in your bio once you get access to that feature. So that's really two out of three macro conversions that I mentioned earlier. How about sales? How do you get those when directly and intensely sales-driven content isn't what tends to work on TikTok, at least right now anyway? The magic hashtags. You don't just add any hashtags when attempting to optimize your content. And as an entrepreneur mom, I feel overall that you should not be using trendy hashtags unless your content just so happens to intersect with a hot trend on TikTok, in which case that's the exception of the rule. Go ahead and use them. Instead, you should be using the magic hashtags, as I call them, which aren't necessarily industry-specific niche hashtags, although you're free to try those out. No, when I'm talking about magic hashtags, I'm talking about the very hashtags that have to do with the wants and or needs of your narrowed down niche, the hashtags that they are searching for when they're looking up content to consume on TikTok. So my entrepreneur mom TikTok hashtag strategy is all about you knowing your niche so well that you know the hashtags that they're likely searching on that relates to their intersecting interest, meaning hashtags that relate to what they're interested in that would intersect them with your business in terms of the content you're creating. And that content should be all about the products and or services that you can provide them with that they're actively looking up content about because they relate to that intersecting interest in the first place. So let me use an example to help you understand. In terms of my family business, we're not sweating using hashtags like hashtag FYP to get on the For You page. Nah, we're focusing on hashtags like in the case of Joe's Dairy Bar and Grill, hashtag mint chip, hashtag ice cream, hashtag cookie dough bites, and occasionally if we can fit in a more broad hashtag that has to do with our content and our niche, something like hashtag yum. If there's space, sure, we'll use a more broad hashtag, but if there's no space to add it in, then we won't waste our space on a too broad hashtag. We'll stick with something more specific that our ideal customer is likely to search on TikTok. You can do a broad hashtag once in a blue if you have space, especially after your caption. And in the example post from us that I just showed you, we actually didn't even put a caption in with our post, which is not what I'd normally teach you to do. Are we perfect? Nope. Are you? Nope. Should you sweat perfection? Nope. But should you normally add both a short tweet kind of caption with at least four four or so hashtags or whatever until TikTok tells you you've exceeded your character limit, in my opinion, yup. But anyway, we at Joe's Dairy Bar and Grill in this example sell hamburgers, hot dogs, milkshakes, and ice cream. Our customers and potential customers aren't necessarily caring about anything other than searching for content that allows them to to consume digital comfort food like ours. When you can't have the real thing, or you can but it's not mealtime yet, what do you think people like members of our niche are searching for that might bring them to our TikTok account? Things like hashtag FYP? No, of course not. You know that it's stuff like hashtag minship, hashtag cookie dough bites, and so on, right? But you know what they're less likely to be searching on in terms of hashtags, and yet someone like one of our less informed competitors might use to optimize their content with? Something like hashtag ice cream lover. I'm not saying our ideal customer would never search on a hashtag like that, but your use of something like an industry term to describe your ideal customer, whether it be an ice cream lover, an equestrian, a hiker, whatever, is not likely going to be the winner in terms of what they're searching on when it comes to hashtags that categorize content that they wanna consume on TikTok. Instead, you have to ask yourself, what would the equestrian be searching for in terms of hashtags to see the content they want to consume? What would the hiker be searching for? Not the word hiker necessarily, for example, but perhaps their search for content on TikTok would involve things like hashtag mountain hike, 
hashtag waterfall hike, or hashtag mountain range. Get it? See, it's not enough to just shove a ton of hashtags into your content as you publish it. You have to be very, very particular about the hashtags that you use, which means that you have to stand in the shoes of your ideal customer and think of search terms, in this case, hashtags, the way you're sure given your research into them and your fine-grained understanding of them as a member of the niche your business serves. Once you've stood in your niche's shoes, you're more likely to start using their search terms or hashtags to optimize your content. And well, what do you know? You're more likely to be found on TikTok by the very people your business is meant to serve in the first place. And if you want to know how to create content that isn't sales driven, but relationship marketing driven, that members of your niche would love to consume, you should check out my video entitled TikTok for Handmade Businesses. Because even if you're not per se a handmade business, there's a lot of golden nuggets in there that will help you to create relationship marketing based content that people on TikTok will gravitate towards and love. The riches are in the niches and the riches can be mined with content marketing on TikTok that's not just optimized, but optimized in a way that your digital breadcrumbs will actually be found by your niche in their search efforts in the first place. Once you have the first two macro conversions in place, the third one, sales, won't be too far behind. The more your new followers get to know, like, and trust your brand, and it's custom crafted community building relationship marketing content. The KLT factor or the no like and trust factor will eventually be so strong, the rapport becomes so great that you'll get messages on TikTok from interested parties who want to buy your products or enjoy access to your services because they understand you. And because of that understanding, they know that you understand people like them too. Not everyone, people exactly like them and people are willing to pay more for custom crafted solutions that are made for people like them too. Added bonus, right? Now, make sure you hit that notification bell because in the next part of this TikTok series, I'll share with you how to use TikTok insights to grow. I told you earlier that you should be sure to have a TikTok pro account so that you can have access to analytics that will help you to understand your audience and create content that's more to their liking. But we go into that in a whole other video. Well, the next video in that series is that video. So don't miss that video. <laughs> in the meantime, make sure you hit that notification bell and select all so that you can follow along with this entire TikTok series that I've got to offer you. In the meantime, while you're waiting for that video, be sure to check out these two awesome videos as well. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps me a lot when you do that. And of course, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.